Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. During a recent live stream, I retested the Space Oddy version of the Space Shuttle. Previously, we had landed very far short, well, landed, no, splashed down really far short of Cape Canaveral. And this time during the live stream, I managed to get it back to Cape Canaveral intact and we will see how that goes. Well, okay, mostly intact. And we'll see how that goes. The launch is not a big problem. The launch script works just fine. It's all about the re-entry script and the changes in that. So that's why I don't have the UI up for the launch. We were just enjoying it during the live stream. Uh, so again, this is a recent version of the very long-running Space Shuttle mod for Kerbal Space Program, uh, especially used for Realism Overhaul. And basically, it has changed quite a lot since KSP 1.8.1. And what I've had to do with the re-entry script is move up the re-entry burn location by about 3,000 kilometers. So it's a huge difference the way it acts in 1.12 versus 1.8.1 with this version versus the previous version. And I tend to think that the reality is somewhere in the middle of the two, probably closer to this one than the version we had in 1.8.1. This one does have uh, firm aerospace stuff on the wings and such, but uh, you saw a little bit of lopsidedness there as we separate from the external tank. That was because the nose RCS was not activated yet. A little bit of a mistake on my part. Uh, but here I am bringing it up to the ISS orbit just for testing purposes. We aren't carrying any cargo, but we are at the 51.4 degree inclination or 51.6 degree inclination about there that the ISS is at. So I get it to ISS level and then bring it back down to our standby orbit, which is one with a period of one and a half hours. I'd really like to not use the standby orbit going forward, but it does make testing more consistent, and that has been helpful so far. Uh, whenever I've tested with the random lopsided orbits, that has been very uh, inconsistent, so haven't really gotten a good handle on numbers from just any old random orbit as far as retro burning from it. But now it is under the control of the re-entry script and again the retro burn point much closer than previously and much closer than I think it ought to be. <laughs> At least judging from listening to the shuttle mission tapes and all that business, you know, there's a certain amount of time that happens between the re-entry burn and then hitting the atmosphere and landing. And we can hear that, and so this is a little bit quicker, but quicker is not bad. And for now, we'll do it the way that this shuttle needs it to be done. In fact, I, I didn't think that the way it happened in 1.8.1 was necessarily exactly right either, and that was probably more further off, but I went with that at that point. Uh, just go with whatever the mod needs, right? Uh, and this is this has a lot of good, uh, good sides to it, because I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time in re-entry, so if re-entry is shorter, that's fine by me, really. But also, uh, things in 1.12 seem to control much better. I think KOS has had substantial improvements. And overall, I thought I was much more careful with the RCS thrust, and it turned much smoother. And the aerodynamics after we take control and land are much better, actually. It handles much better than the previous shuttle. So, lots of good things going on with this one. That'll make it easier. Uh, so, I'm very much willing to except however it is and probably with if the improvements are to KOS I haven't really changed the script so uh, it's just the same thing that I've told it to do but KOS is just doing it better and that being the case probably other systems that KOS controls will probably do RCS burns better as well so I look forward to testing that out and seeing if we can put that to practical use as uh, I've sort of captured uh, every 10 kilometers in altitude here for reference because the script still needs some tweaking even though we do make it back to Cape Canaveral. Um, there are times when it's pitching down in order to get more lift when it doesn't really need to and here it's trying to get extra drag it's doing the S turns because earlier on it was trying to get more lift and now it's trying to get more drag but really they should just, it should just be sticking to about 40 degrees the whole way. Doing S turns is fine though. Uh, it's nice to see that it can do that efficiently. But actually we're using a lot of pitch here because I accidentally moved the center of mass in the wrong direction in the configuration. I was trying to adjust it, but I adjusted it wrong, so that was my fault. But we ended up with just barely enough fuel uh, to get back down, even though I made that mistake. But yeah, so we're doing the S turns probably uh, I just need to adjust the script as far as 
how much energy it thinks it needs at any given point, given this new situation. And then we won't be doing so much of the adjustments. Anyway, we basically overshoot Cape Canaveral initially, but not by so much that the shuttle can't make it back. So here we're pitching down, and one adjustment I made to the script was that uh, it used to pitch down at 35 kilometers because uh, with the drag that the old shuttle had, uh, 35 kilometers was where it was safe to because we have to be below a certain speed. But here I got to 45 kilometers to start pitching down because we were already slow enough because this has much more drag. So, yeah, it's very important that it uh, pitches down between Mach 3 and Mach 5, basically. Too fast and the vertical stabilizer isn't really good enough to control it. Uh, too slow and it's going to stall out, basically. So, anyway, I took control a little bit early. I normally take control at 15 kilometers, but I took control at 20 and it was very easy to turn. So, it turned very smoothly. And here we are gliding back. And my general principle is if I can see the runway, I'm in good shape to get back to Cape Canaveral, and I was able to see the runway after turning, so... I was fairly confident that I could get it back safely. And there's the runway. Somebody uh, asked what the interior looked like, so here we are trying to do a cockpit landing. Probably not the best idea ever. We have way too much energy, actually. Uh, I wasn't entirely expecting that. I knew we could get back, but we actually have too much speed right now. Which is weird, because earlier on, of course, it's getting so much drag, it's very good at slowing down in the atmosphere. Now, uh, that translates to a lot of lift, actually. And drag and lift are not against each other, they're actually related. But, yeah, so I had to make a lot of wild turns. I'm not trying to line up with the runway, I'm, I'm actually trying to dissipate the energy by going side to side and pulling up and pushing down, trying to get more drag out of it somehow. Uh, to slow down, but it was really dark because the sun was actually behind us. I'm sure NASA when planning these missions Figures out uh, all the sun angle stuff and all that, but I didn't really think about that So yeah, really dark on approach doing wild things to slow down You can see the speed is really high 176 meters per second. We want to touch down at 90 <laughs> so uh, The air brakes don't work The air brakes did not work for me uh, I'll have to check on that. Maybe they are supposed to work, but I just didn't have them configured properly, but they didn't seem to work. They didn't slow us down at all. So, yeah, here we go, though. We don't have too much choice. We're coming down. That was really fast. 150 meters per second. We've got Kerbal wheels. And then Kerbal things happen. I'm trying to deploy the drag chute there. And then something explodes. We don't know what's exploded right now. And we were down. It wasn't like I was pitched up and hit the tail or anything. Uh, but... When I tried to deploy the drag chutes through staging, and they were the only thing left, the, the air brakes do open, they just don't actually do anything as far as drag is concerned. Uh, but yeah, we lost the bottom two engines somehow. Not the body flop, interestingly. But it occurred when I was trying to deploy the drag chute, and so, I don't know, maybe the drag chute is weirdly positioned? The F3 log says that SME crashed into 11, which I have no idea what that means. And it only said one, if I can know that. I guess uh, both of them happened simultaneously or something, I don't know. But yeah, okay, anyway, we can get the shuttle back to the runway. There's just a matter of a little bit of refinement as far as trying to improve the situation, but it is quite doable, and really it's probably better in this version than in 1.8.1, uh, especially because KOS is handling it better. And really, I think we all want to spend less time during re-entry, so... Uh, it's probably better off and closer to reality in that respect. The other one was a little bit uh, too long during re-entry. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.